and welcome everybody. Um, thank you, Alison, for leading our service. Just a few announcements before we start properly. Um, thank you to Diana and Shelley for yesterday's carol sing and to everyone else who helped make it happen. It was much appreciated. Christmas Live is at 7 p.m. tomorrow at the Peacock. Um, please see Alison if you're not on the WhatsApp group um, because there have been so many changes to arrangements. And there's a practice, is there, after the service? Uh, uh, yeah, whoever's here, I live in faith. And uh, next Saturday, Christmas Eve, there'll be the crib service at 4.30 p.m. and midnight communion at 11.30. And our only service on Christmas Day is at 10.30. New Year's Day, 10.30, will be our Chris Stingle service. Please sign the big Christmas card in the foyer, um, and if you're able, donate any Christmas card money to the Children's Society. It's from everyone to everyone. And lastly, please tell me, or John Foster, if, you're, if you'd like to come and help decorate the vicarage, decorate not Christmas, but decorate as in <laughs> walls, uh, on Thursday the 29th of December and or Monday to Wednesday, 2nd to 4th of January. 4th of January is our last opportunity to do this. And I think uh, Janet and uh, Gwyneth and Simon and Matt and Katie will tell you it's been a, a, a good experience to work alongside some members of the GRAF team, getting to know them. Thank you. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Would anybody like to come and help me with the candles? There's no age limit on that. Would anybody like to come and light a candle? I thought you might like to. You come on. Jessica, do you want to come and light some candles? Right. So who knows how many candles do we need to light today? How many Sundays before Christmas have we ticked off? What do you think, Jessica? Four. It is all four of them. So if you do two, and if you do two, Bear. I wonder if this brings a feeling of expectancy to anybody or anxiety to anybody when we're lighting all four candles. I'll try not to say four candles as many times as I possibly can as well. All right, and then if you come round onto this one. So the first candle reminded us about the patriarchs and the matriarchs. Lovely, thank you. Second candle was the prophets. The third candle is for John the Baptist. Who knows what the fourth candle is for? Do you want to see the clever way of putting it? You slide that back down. Slide that bit there. There you go. It's, cool. it's really cool, isn't it? So the fourth candle is for Mary. Mary. So we have a prayer which we can all say together. God our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your great work of bringing to our world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. And so we're going to sing about what the birth of Jesus was like from the squalor of a borrowed stable. And then we'll move on into Emmanuel. Shall we stand to sing? From the squalor
As we realize that name, that Emmanuel, that God is with us, let's sit down and think about those things that we might want to talk to God, the things that we might like to change, the things that we might like to put right in our own lives. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in work and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we say the collect together? Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please can we have our first Bible reading. beginning at chapter 1, verse 1. From Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, and an apostle chosen and called by God to preach his good news. The good news was promised long ago by God through his prophets, as written in the Holy Scriptures. It is about his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. As to his humanity, he was born a descendant of David. As to his divine holiness, he was shown with great power to be the Son of God by being raised from, the de from death. Through him, God gave me the privilege of being an apostle for the sake of Christ in order to lead people of all nations to believe and obey. This also includes you who are in Rome whom God has called to belong to Jesus Christ. And so I write to all of you in Rome, whom God loves and has called to be his own people. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 1, beginning at verse 18, the birth of Jesus Christ. This was how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they were married, she found out that she was going to have a baby by the Holy Spirit. Joseph was her man who always did what was right, but he did not want to disgrace Mary publicly, so he made plans to break the engagement privately. While he was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife, for it is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. Now all this happened in order to make what the Lord had said through the prophet come true. A virgin will become pregnant and have a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So when Joseph woke up, he married Mary, as the angel of the Lord had told him to do but he had no sexual relations with her before she gave birth to her son. And Joseph named him Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Lord Jesus, take my words and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. And take our hearts 
and set them on fire for you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Do sit down. I'm afraid you're going to have to bear with me because this isn't, didn't turn out to be quite the sermon I was planning to write, but these are the words that God gave me to bring to you, so I hope they are useful. When I was five, we first went to St Cuthbert's Church in York, and as a family, we were given an invitation card. It was an invitation to come to church. And because I was the youngest, it was put in my hand, and I liked that. We are thinking back to the 1960s here, call the midwife time, and things were a little simpler. So it was just a card invitation, but I loved the way that it opened up. It sort of opened into the middle and you pulled it back out again. On the front, there was a picture of a few people gathered, and when you opened it up, it was the same picture with many more people. And I just enjoyed the way, the clever way in it was folded and the picture. An invitation to me at that time was a privilege. It was, would usually have been to a party. It was definitely something to look forward to. It was something that was guaranteed to be good. A few weeks ago, I had another invitation. Do let me assure you, I have had invitations in between the time. This time it was an email and there was no picture. It was to give a talk to the sixth form of Wales High School to a couple of hundred older teenagers. They'd asked the Children Society for a talk on toxic masculinity. That's the teachers had asked, the children hadn't. And they wanted me there for 8.30 a.m. I had only vaguely heard of toxic masculinity. Speaking to sixth formers is something I had done before, but not in an assembly. And getting to the other side of Sheffield and beyond before 8.30 a.m. was seriously outside my comfort zone. And yet, I said yes. It was an invitation I wanted to take. And yes, it was good to be there. A few months ago, I had a very different sort of invitation. I was at my niece's wedding where she had asked me to lead the prayers. That had been a privilege and a joy. Not surprisingly, at the reception, I was sitting next to someone I had never met before. And his opening line of conversation to me was, of course, I am a complementarian. A complementarian is someone who holds the view that men and women have different but complementary roles in marriage, family life, and in religious leadership, with leadership being assigned to men and support to women. His remark was to me a challenging invitation to debate. And if you want to know the rest of the story, you can talk later. But those two invitations left me thinking, where do we get our image of biblical masculinity from? At first, when I saw what the readings were for today, I was a little disappointed. For 10 years, I have preached on John the Baptist and always missed out on preaching on Mary. So, but this year, when I've got the opportunity to preach on the fourth Sunday in Advent, it's the turn of Matthew to tell the story. And Matthew, in Matthew's version, Mary is silenced. She is found to be with child. Joseph takes her as his wife. Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, is not recorded in saying anything, in making any decisions. She is passive and treated as an object. In fact, in Matthew's gospel, no woman is given a name who speaks. You could be annoyed about that, but in doing so, Matthew very subtly shows how Jesus included those without power and those without lineage. So, my decision was made that I would be true to the Gospels and true to the lectionary, and we would talk about Joseph. The purpose of my talk on toxic masculinity was to address the issue men and boys have with a society which expects them to fit a particular mould, a James Bond type mould, a mould which expects them to be strong, to hide their emotions, to have an answer in every situation. When I was doing the talk with the 
um, sixth formers in Wales, there was a slide, the Children's Society had helped me, I didn't have to work from scratch, they sent me some slides. And one of the slides gave the kids some choices as to which of these two things do you think is more masculine? And some of them were a bit like fun, they were things like beef or chicken, cakes or pie. Some of them were a bit of a challenge, cycling or running. One of them left me quite disturbed. It was asking questions or giving answers. And the boys recognised that they were expected to give answers. And you could see on their faces that they felt a little bit unsure about always having to have an answer for every situation. I rather wish they'd said, can you, have another, can you ask for directions when you're going somewhere? But that is a problem. You know, if, you, if you don't have the confidence to ask for directions, it is difficult. Forcing men into this mould leads them to overcompensate, sometimes. And that can spill out in aggression or abuse against those who are physically weaker than them, which is often women or children. It can lead to solitude for men. And it leads to the biggest killer in men under 40, suicide. Hence the need to talk to the sixth form about it. In this story of Joseph, we are offered an alternative view. Joseph may be named. He may have a position of power as a man. But Matthew does not give him a voice. We don't actually hear him speak. Instead, he simply accepts the invitation God gives him to come and be part of the plan. Sometimes people might like to pose the question, well, what if Mary had said no to Gabriel? Surely God could have managed without her. God is, after all, God. But that isn't God's way. God calls us, invites us to be part of his plan. God didn't dictate to Mary that she had to have the baby. God invited her. She had a choice because God is the primary believer in free will. It is what God designed the world to have. So God invited Mary into a radical, life-transforming experience. And in agreeing, Mary accepted the vulnerability, the sacrifice, and the potential for love that she was opening herself up to. Here in Matthew's account, God opens that invitation to Joseph to include him in the plan. In marrying jo Mary, Joseph can give her protection from those who might have gossiped about her, accused her of adultery, or even stoned her. There is a reason that Joseph took Mary with him to Bethlehem. He didn't need to. As a man, it was enough for him to go and register. But he took Mary to ensure she was safe. We are not made for solitude. And Joseph is told to name the baby Jesus, because in those times it was the father's role to name the child. But in the explanation, the angel refers to that older name from the prophecy in Isaiah chapter seven, Emmanuel, God is with us. Not a top-down God who is doing things for us. Not a controlling God who has taken choice away from us. Not a superior God who treats us like an inferior, inferior toys. But a God who is with us. Who invites us to be part of his plan. God wasn't looking for a man who would have all the answers. A man who was strong enough to overcome any obstacle a man who was in control. He was looking for a man who had compassion, a man who could listen, a man who would risk his reputation alongside Mary's, a man who would protect his wife and show respect to her, and above all, a man who would support his wife in her calling from God, no matter what the cost. This is biblical masculinity at its best. Are we okay for the picture? Those of you who have been in the cathedral will know that there is a nativity scene with a difference. Joseph 
the picture will come up when it comes up and you can see it. But Joseph stands there holding the baby and Mary is there beside him in wonder. It's an important image as Joseph accepts the child as his own and following the Jewish tradition gives the baby his name. Joseph giving the baby Jesus his name was hugely important. He roots Jesus in the scriptures, making Jesus visibly the son of David, the one who is prophesied about. Joseph gives Jesus his legitimacy, which was so crucial at the time. Joseph chooses to take Jesus into his family and to allow Jesus to change his life forever. And the fact that we listen and think about Joseph means that we can realize that this invitation is extended to us as well. We also are called by God to be part of God's plan, to bring hope and light and love to the world. And we can only do that if we too, like Joseph, are prepared to take Jesus into our lives. And then, like Mary, to give that invitation to others. I find this story challenging. There are times when I want to be angry with Joseph for planning to reject Mary. I find the cathedral nativity scene a challenge. I want Mary to hold the baby, to have the reward for all she chooses to do. But that is not what Mary agreed to do. And that is not what I believe Mary wants. Mary never looked for the limelight. She is constantly pointing to Jesus. She always knew that Jesus wasn't hers to keep, but was to share. Jesus was someone to give. Hers was an invitation to take on something that would cost her more than she knew she could bear. And she does that from the start, giving Jesus to the one person who had nearly broken her heart with rejection. And with God the Father, giving Joseph the privilege of naming God's son as his own. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, forgive us for the times when we have rejected you, when we have thought we were strong enough without you, when we have tried to work our lives out alone. Thank you that you came to earth to be with us. Please come into my life today. Let me name you as my own saviour. Come and be part of my family and give me the desire to share you with those I know and love today. Amen. Shall we stand and say the creed, what we believe together? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Would you like to sit down and we'll continue in our prayers. You may be interested, the prayers I'm going to use this morning come from David Adams' book, Searchlights. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for in your love you wait on us. You trust us with your plans and allow us to share in the bringing in of your kingdom. Help us at all times to trust in you and to seek to do your will. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, ever with us, help your church to proclaim your presence and your saving power. May we seek to do your will and help to bring in your kingdom. As we give thanks for Joseph, we give thanks for all men and women of vision and all who have dedicated their lives in your service. We ask your blessing upon all preachers and ministers of the sacraments. Guide all who serve you quietly in their daily lives. We remember especially all who struggle to serve you while surrounded by difficult circumstances and opposition. There is a response. When I say, God, come among us, please will you say, make your home with us. God, come among us. Make your home with us. God of freedom, we pray for all who are oppressed. We ask your blessings upon all who suffer through tyranny or terrorism. We remember all whose freedom has been diminished through war or violence. We pray for the poor, the hungry and the homeless. And within that, Lord, we pray for Christmas Live, that we will be able to collect for the homeless in Sheffield. God, come among us. Make your home with us. We give thanks for our homes and for all who love us. May we show your presence in our daily living. We pray for homes where there is neglect or lack of love, where there is cruelty or deep selfishness. We remember all who live alone and those who are lonely. God, come among us. Make your home with us. Lord, you are with us even when it is dark. We ask your blessing upon all who are in pain or in fear. We pray for those who are ill at home or in hospital and all who have been injured this week. We remember those who feel life has little meaning and those who have lost their way or who are anxious about their future. God, come among us. Make your home with us. We give thanks that in you life is eternal and we ask your blessing upon our friends and loved, one, loved ones who are departed from us. And we remember especially Jean Glynn and her family. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand for the peace? God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. If you would like to turn and share a sign of peace with those around you as you feel comfortable. From heaven you came.
splendor and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours all things, all things come, come from you, you and, and of your Lord own do we give you the Lord is here Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away from you, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you in the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your son, dear son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We turn to page 19. Please sit down. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith with thanksgiving. When I was preparing for the service, I remembered that it is Fourth Sunday, and on Fourth Sunday, we used to pray for healing. So I'm going to say a general prayer for healing. If there is anything that you would need healing for in your life, would you just bring it to mind? If there is anyone that you know who needs healing, just hold them in your heart. Our needs and the needs of uh, Christ brings you wholeness in body, mind and spirit. Deliver you from every evil and give you his peace. At Christ Church we welcome anyone who loves and serves the Lord Jesus to come forward and share in communion. If you would prefer to have a blessing, then just keep your hands down and I will pray for you.
Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we prepare ourselves for going outside and sharing that joy with the world by singing Ding Dong Merrily on High. Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and reign, remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is Jesus Christ, I live in hope. 
Jesus Christ, my living 